So, I'm about to do one of the book biggest, <laughs> can't even talk, book hauls I've ever done, featuring 28 books. So, it's pretty big. So if you don't have time to watch this video, I'm just telling you right now, save it till later, okay? Or if you are gonna watch it right now, get yourself some snacks, something to drink. Yeah, okay, <laughs> here we go. March Madness Book Haul Part Five. <laughs> There's the book outlet box and <laughs> the camera lens. Sorry about that. This haul is about to begin. First up is 90 Miles to Havana by Enrique Flores Galbis. Enrique Flores Galbis, I think that's how you pronounce it. And this is a, I don't know what that award is, but I think it's important. <laughs> obviously I'm just uneducated as to what it is if y'all know let me know in the comments this is about three brothers must escape from Cuba to a country so near yet so far away so this is about kind of like immigrating into the United States um yeah via Miami so I don't know. This looks really interesting. I thought it looked interesting when I saw it on Book Outlet. I don't really know any more than that, but this is the cover, which is gorge. I love it, and I'm intrigued. I'm super intrigued, and I cannot wait to read this one. So there's a little snapshot to what it's about, if y'all can read that really quickly. So there you go. Book one. Next up, The Tea Rose by Jennifer Donnelly. Uh, I don't know if you can see that clearly, but I've been wanting to read this novel forever. It's a historical novel. Here you go. And another one I don't know too much about, but right there is a little snapshot quote from Frank McCourt, who wrote Angela's Ashes. A splendid, heartwarming novel of pain, struggle, decency, triumph. Uh, yeah, East London, 1988. A city apart, a place of shadow and light, etc., etc., etc. A main character's name is Fiona, and I think she has to make a journey. Her life is kind of falls apart, and she has to travel to New York and start over. And yeah, I'm intrigued. Don't know much more than that. This one is a beast, though. And I cannot wait to read this one. The Tea Rose. Next up is one I know absolutely nothing about. And that is Adam of the Road by Elizabeth Janet Gray. Illustrated by Robert Lawson. Um, as y'all know, I am obsessed with children's lit. This is a Newbery Award winner. Or award, yeah, it won. And I saw it on Book Outlet, and I just I just had to have it. I didn't know what it was about, but I just had to have it. It's about a young boy, <laughs> and I'm about to tell you what it's about, even though I said it, I don't know. I know vaguely. It's about a young boy who's a minstrel. Um, so obviously this takes place in medieval England. Um... Yeah, that's all I know. I feel like he's like on a quest to find his father or something, but he's a minstrel and he travels from town to town. And there's the map of London, medieval London. See that date? June 1294. That's intense. That map is gorge. Ooh. Same map on the back. So pretty. I don't see any illustrations outright. Huh. Oh, here's one. That's really pretty. That's pretty awesome. So yeah. There's that one. Adam of the Road. Hope you can see it. 
this new style of filming is kind of experimental, so just bear with me. I'm trying to figure out if this works out or not. I think it works, right? Right? Next. Oh. Let's see what this one is. Oh, we got a party. Let me get them all out so we can have the whole party with us. Yikes. I'm slowly collecting um, these. They're from two different series, both by Cassandra Clare, but the series connect. You have the Mortal Instrument series, and this is book five, City of Lost Souls, and you also have the, what is this series? The Infernal Devices series, there we go. And this is the final book, The Clockwork Princess. So I just have to get the first two of this series and the first four as well as the final six of this one so yeah mm -hmm. they all appear there from time to time so so I'm just gonna slowly kind of collect them as I see them on the site everyone's seen these but these covers really are very beautiful in person and I will be taking this sticker off at some point all right what's next there we go Right there we got The Coldest Girl in Code Town by Holly Black, which I read in December, I think it was December, and absolutely adored. And now I have my own copy and not just a library copy. So, hooray. Not going to go into too much detail. We've all seen this one. Excellent. Holly Black is the bomb. Next, this is The Girl Who Sold. Over Fairyland and Cut the Moon in Two by Catherine M. Valente. And this is actually book three in the series. I have book one, the girl who circumnavigated Fairyland in a ship of her own making, I think, or something like that. Um, and I hauled it a few months ago. So this is book three. Now I just have to track down book two. Um, they have book two on Book Outlet, but only in paperback. And I'm determined to collect these in the hardcover editions. So yeah, dragon, all about it. Next. This gorgeous novel is called The Swan Gondola by Timothy Shaffert. And I don't know anything about this book, but apparently it is a romance and it's written by a dude, which yay. It's got an, a ridiculously beautiful cover, another yay. And um, swans, so why not? It's about the World Fair of 1898. So, yep, there it goes. The Omaha, Omaha, Nebraska, P.S. World's Fair of 1898 comes to gritty yet magical life in this enchanting new novel, a mystical tale of love, loss, and spiritual reincarnation. How could I not get it, guys? Shout out to Omaha, which is where my best friend Brooke lives. But yeah, there you go. After that magnificence, we have... So I did get book six after all. <laughs> By Cassandra Clare in her Mortal Instruments series, City of Heavenly Fire. So I have five and six, so I just need the first four of this series. Once again, this is everywhere. These books are literally everywhere. Now, moving on, The Evolution of Copernia Tate and Entwined by Heather Dixon. Let me get those in frame. This is a children's novel that has won the, what is that award? Is it the Newbery? It is indeed the Newbery Award. It has won it. Um, I don't know what this one's about either, but I've heard amazing things. It's by Jacqueline Kelly. Y'all know I love kids lit. Um, it's a historical novel, so I love historicals. Let's see. Copernia is about to have the most exciting year of her life. The summer of 1899 is hot in Copernia's sleepy Texas town, and there aren't a lot of good ways to stay cool. Her mother has a new wind machine, but instead Kelly's contemplating cutting off her hair one sneaky inch at a time. She's also spending a lot of time at the river with her notoriously cantankerous 
grandfather, an avid naturalist. But just when Callie and her grandfather are about to make an amazing discovery, the reality of Callie's situation catches up with her. She's a girl at the turn of the century, expected to cook and clean and sew. What a waste of time. Will Callie ever find a way to take control of her own destiny? That's freaking amazing. So excited I got this. Gender roles, yes. Oh my gosh. Looks spectacular. Entwined by Heather Dixon. I've been dying to read this forever since it came out in 2012. And it's riveting, apparently. According to her. <laughs> the cover certainly is. Look at that. Look at that freaking shine. I wanted it in hard copy, but you know, beggars can't be choosers. So, and I'm actually starting to prefer paperback, y'all. Thumbs up if you prefer prefer paperback books. Paper, blah, blah, blah. Can't talk. Paperback books. So, yeah. I don't know what this is about, but it is a retelling of the 12 Dancing Princesses, which is one of my favorite fairy tales of all time. If you can read that, then you get to see a little bit of what the novel is about. So I'll just hold that for a second. You can read it if you wish, or you can pause. No? Yes? Okay. Done? Great. There they are. All right. Next. There we go. The Caning Season by Polly Horvath. And this is another National Book Award winner. This is another children's literature genre book. And incidentally, this is the book pick for the Forever Young Book Club's March pick. This is what we're reading in March, the caning season. So yeah, there we go. Don't know what it's about. And that's okay with me. <laughs> How freaking amazing is this cover though? It's so cool. Love it has such like a creepy, whimsical, interesting like vibe to it just by the cover. So I'm looking forward to reading this one. After that we have, we got The Host by Stephanie Meyer because I've never read it. Enough said. This cover is very interesting. It says new bonus chapters inside. No, one chapter, new bonus chapter inside. It's like the original cover, but different. The spine certainly is different. I think the original book is all black. This spine has purple. Hmm. I've never seen the film, so. I have Ignite Me, which is book three in the Shatter Me series. Third and final book. Now I just got to get the first two. I saw this on Book Outlet and I was shocked. Literally shocked. This lighting is crazy, so sorry, y'all. This series, of course, is by Tehera Mafi, and yeah, we've seen this everywhere, so I'm not going to talk too much about it. Far, Far Away by Tom McNeil. This had such a whimsical fairy tale vibe to it, I had to pick it up. The cover is very interesting, that's why you have the shiny effect. It's actually plastic. Look at that. Can you see that? Can you see how the words of the dust jacket are written literally on plastic. It's fascinating. And then the actual hardcover book is the image. It just has this plastic dust jacket. It's really fascinating. Let me give you a sneak peek. In a small town where nothing ever happens, everything is about to change. Ooh. I think it follows a male protagonist too, which I'm trying to read more of. I think sometimes as a female, you know, I have to like push myself to read from a male point of view. And I have to push myself to read male authors as well, so. Word. This is a strange and fateful tale. Oh, you can see me. Hi, guys. Of a boy, a girl, and an ancient ghost. Ooh. Hey, guys. <laughs> All right, let me show you again. There we go. Next up, 
Next, I have Attachments by Rainbow Rowell. And this completes my Rainbow Rowell collection <laughs> thus far. She's coming out with a new book soon. But yes, Rainbow Rowell, Attachments. What more can I say? Nothing, nothing else left to be said. We know that we all adore her. So, there's that. Finally have all her novels. Thanks, Book Outlet. Love in the Time of Global Warming by for Francesca Leah Block. And I also have book two, which y'all have seen in a newer haul that will go up before this one. And this is the first book. When, with a, when the World Ends. Whoa, can't even read that. Sorry, guys. When the World Ends, the only thing left worth fighting for is love. Yay. This is a dystopian. Dystopian. So, it says, a stunning... Reimagining of Homer's Odyssey set in post-apocalyptic Los Angeles, written by a master storyteller. Y'all know I just got the Odyssey in my last haul, or one of my last hauls, so many hauls, um, <laughs> that I put up in February, I want to say. So I'm so excited to have like an Odyssey's type retelling type story because I'm a bit obsessed with the story at the moment. And if you can get a sneak peek of what the book is about, awesome. Alrighty. Cry the Beloved Country by Alan Patton. This is another book that I have been wanting to read for quite some time. Years, really. And I cannot wait. Right down in teeny, teeny, tiny writing. It says, a beautiful novel, rich, firm, and moving. Its writing is so fresh. It's projection of character so immediate and full its events so compelling and its understanding so compassionate that to read the book is to share intimately even to the point of catharsis in the grave human experience the new york times wow high praise indeed damn damn the most famous important novel in south africa's history Ah, oh, so happy to finally own this in my hands. Almost done. Almost done. There we go. You knew it was coming. Everyone's reading this woman. Gail Foreman's Just One Day. And we all know what this is, book is about. And I don't really have any interest in reading um, where she went or where she goes or whatever. Those books. Not really interested. There we go. If I stay where she went. But this one intrigues me. Okay. So there it is. And finally picked up book three in this series. I can never remember the name of this damn series. Rune and Rising. Now I just need book one by Lee Bardugo. Grisha. There we go. Grisha trilogy. Now I'm just missing this one. But th yep. There we go. Rune and Rising. Finally got it. Awesome. Now this is cool. This is A Wrinkle in Time, the graphic novel. Which, I mean, hello. How could you not want to own this in your life? Adapted and illustrated by Hope Larson. Can y'all see that? So, yeah. Ooh. There's a little snapshot. Another snapshot. Another snapshot. Awesome. Last but not least is my piece de resistance of this haul. These books I was so excited to find on Book Outlet that I bought them all. <laughs> At least all the ones I could find. They didn't have all of them. And there they are, the Little House books um, of the series. These aren't all of them, by the way. And these are the Full Color Collector's Edition. Okay, so there's book one, Little House in the Big Woods. Book two, Farmer Boy. Book three, Little House on the Prairie. Book four, On the Banks of Plum Creek. 
Then down here, I believe this is, wait a minute, I'm missing one for, something's out of order, here we go. There, that was out of order, sorry about that. Book five, By the Shores of Silver Lake. I don't have book six. <laughs> this is book seven, Little Town on the Prairie. Um, I don't know which one this is. The first four years, I think it comes after these happy golden years, which I own previously. But this one is not part of the full color collector's edition. It's just the regular paperback. And I didn't have it, so I snatched it up. But eventually I want to own the whole series in this edition. Because it's amazing. <laughs> this is literally my childhood right here. Little house in the big woods. And the illustrations, guys. I really do love that they're full color illustrations. Look how beautiful. I'm currently rereading it and I'm in the middle of this one right now. I mean, I mean, I mean. <laughs> Ooh. Oh dear. Oh dear. Yeah, I'm finding rereading them an interesting experience. Just finding like the subtle racist tones and the slaughtering of animals is not fun to read. I'm not going to lie, but I don't know. There's so much nostalgia attached to this series and I don't know. I definitely will do a book talk about these. So that concludes part four, not five, of my March Madness haul, and I think I'm going to have one final part going up if that um, box arrives before the end of March. may go up in April though, so heads up. And that's it. Oh, that was exhausting. Hope y'all enjoyed. Thumbs up this video if you liked. Subscribe if you haven't already. Um, let me know which books you're interested in, um, which ones you liked, if you've read them and if you own them yourselves. And I'm Oshale, and I will catch you in my next video. Bye. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs>